Hi. Now if you've been following the videos that I've been doing in this series on solving fractional inequalities where in the denominators of these fractions we've got functions of x, you'll know that there are several ways that we can do this. Generally it can be graphical or analytical. Now I'm going to show you how we can go about solving this by the graphical method where we plot the graph of the left hand side of this inequality and plot the graph of the right hand side of the inequality and then compare the graphs. We look at where this graph is above this graph. I'll show you. First of all though, if we're going to sketch this graph 3 minus x over x minus 8, to me that's something that I'm not really familiar with. So I'm going to divide x minus 8 into 3 minus x because it'll be an easier graph to work with. I'll show you. So if we take x minus 8 and we divide it into 3 minus x, I'm going to need to change this round though to minus x plus 3 so that I multiply the x with a minus 1 to give me minus x and then plus 8. And if I subtract to find out what the remainder is, you can see that I end up with 3 minus the 8, which is going to be minus 5. So I can write this part, the left hand side, as minus 1, so we get therefore minus 1, and then I've got the remainder, minus 5, over the divisor, x minus 8. And that has got to be, in this case, greater than or equal to 1 over x. Now plotting this graph, to me, is a lot easier than plotting this one, because I can use transformations of graphs. What I can think of, first of all, is that this is based around the reciprocal graph of, say, f of x equaling 1 over x. In fact, that's what we've got here. Let's start by sketching this graph, the graph of 1 over x. So we'll take our axes, we'll just draw them down here, OK? We've got our x-axis and we've got, say, a y-axis here. So the graph of y equals 1 over x is going to be this graph, which you should be familiar with, 1 over x, then something like that. OK? Let's just put that that is the graph y equals 1 over x. So we're back to this graph, the graph on the left-hand side. Now, if I'm going to look at the graph of 1 over x minus 8 first of all, then I can take this and think of the graph of f of x minus 8, which will be now 1 over x minus 8, where I replace any x here with x minus 8. And I know that what that would do is it would take the graph that we have here and it would shift it 8 units to the right. So essentially then, if I draw a dotted line down here, this becomes our asymptote at the point where x equals 8. So the graph of 1 over x minus 8 is going to look something like this. All right. Then what I'm going to do next is multiply both sides by a 5. So if I multiply this by 5, then we get 5 here. And I know that this would stretch this graph by a scale factor of 5. But essentially, it's going to retain much the same kind of shape about this asymptote here, where x is 8. Now I've got a minus in front of this. And by putting a minus in front of this function, it's going to reflect it in the x-axis. So this graph if I have a minus, is then going to look something like this. We'll just do it in green, like so. OK, in fact, that should really be closer to the asymptote. And that would come down like that, something like that. OK? 
So the green graph now would be the graph of f of x equaling minus 5 over x minus 8. Now I'm going to subtract 1 and so what happens to this graph is it moves down by one unit. So I'm now going to sketch this on here. What we're going to have is another asymptote. It's going to move down to minus 1. So we'll just draw a line across there. And it's also going to have this asymptote at x equals 8. So I'm not drawing this to scale, but we'll just pretend then that that is where x equals 8. Let's just mark those points in. That's 8, and that is at minus 1. OK, now we need to, to sketch that graph in then finally. So it's going to be this graph just moved down by one unit. So you're going to get the graph looking something like this. And then it's going to be in this section here. But I want to know where this graph is going to cross the y-axis before I sketch it in. And I can do that by placing x equal to 0 in here, or in here. It doesn't matter. They're both equivalent to one another. Well, if I put it in the top one, you can see that you get 3 over minus 8. Minus 3 eighths, in other words. Well, if that was minus 1, we'll just say that that's where it crosses the y-axis at minus 3 eighths. I'm not going to write that in, but I'm just going to draw that in now. So I know that as I come through here, it's going to cross below the origin and then head up towards this asymptote here. Let's just bring that in like so. All right, so I hope you got the idea. That is the graph then. The green graph is y equals the 3 minus x over x minus 8. Okay, so quite a lot of work then involved with that. Let's just mark the origin on as well. Now, what I'm looking for is where the green graph is greater than or equal to the red graph. Greater than or equal to would be like saying, where is the green graph above the red graph? And I can see that the green graph is above the red graph when we're between say, this point here, out to just the y-axis. Because over this stretch, the green graph is below the red graph. But then the green graph becomes above the red graph on this stretch here. OK? So what it needs, or what I need, is these points of intersection. So we get these points of intersection. Let's call them, say, A and B. Let's just mark that one there as A and this one here as B. So we need to calculate those points A and B. So what I'll do is we'll just remove this. And so for those points, for the points A and B, let's just write them in for A and B, we need to equate the two equations. We need to say that 3 minus x over x minus 8, 3 minus x over x minus 8 has got to equal 1 over x. And if we were to multiply both sides by x and x minus 8, we would therefore have x bracket 3 minus x equals 1 times x minus 8, or just simply x minus 8. And if we expand the bracket, we get 3x minus x squared equals x minus 8. And rearrange this now so that we get a positive quadratic equation. So we're going to add x squared to both sides and subtract 3x from both sides. And if we do that, we end up with x squared minus 2x minus 8 equals 0. Factorizing this gives us two brackets equal to 0. That will be x there and x there. And then we're going to have plus 2 and minus 4. So we're solving this for a and b. And that means that either x plus 2 equals 0, leading to x is minus 2, or x minus 4 is equal to 0. And that's going to give us x equals 4. So 
which one corresponds to a well clearly the minus 2 is a so that point there is at minus 2 and the point at b the x coordinate at b has to be the 4 so as i said earlier we're looking for where the green graph is above because it's greater than or equal to the red graph so we can see then that the solutions are going to be that for from the graph we can say from the graph we can see that x has to lie between minus 2 and the 0 because it's on this stretch that it's just above the red graph so x has to lie between minus 2 and 0 or you can see that the green graph is above the red graph then over this stretch between 4 and 8 so we can say that x has got to lie between 4 and 8 but we've got to be careful because this says greater than or equal to so we'll be looking to put some equals in here as well but be careful because you cannot divide by 0 and that would mean that x cannot equal 0 and x minus 8 can't equal 0 leading to x being the fact that x cannot equal 8 so in these inequalities we can see that you can actually equal minus 2 so we can have x is greater than or equal to minus 2 but we cannot have it equal to 0 and for this inequality x can equal the 4 but it cannot equal the 8 all right so do take care with that some questions they do not give you these kind of conditions so you're going to have to go out and have a look check that out okay so that is another way of solving this kind of inequality by a graphical method where we look at sketching the graphs of the two equations either side of the inequality and then comparing them whether they're above or below one another okay if this was a less than or equal to then I would be looking at where the green graph was below the red graph okay so there you go I hope that's given you some idea of how you can tackle it by this particular method